This is Indie Book Publishing. Indie Book Publishing is a show about new books and the authors who wrote them. It's an opportunity for prospective readers to hear directly from the writers, to hear what inspired them to write and publish, and to hear all the inside details about their books. And now, Indie Book Publishing. The Voices on Air, and I'm your host, Rick Bell. Our next book is Dare to Be a Revolutionary Leader. The author of this book is an expert in working with leadership and management teams and they drive home the point that there is no one size fits all when it comes to leadership styles. She argues that the most important thing to know about leadership is that it occurs at all levels, be that individual, group and across the organisation. And joining me now to give us an insight into the book and to the world of leadership is the author, Charlie Swords. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much, Rick. It's a delight a delight for me to be here and thank you for inviting me. Now, the, the, the first question I have to start with, the title of the book is Dare to be a Revolutionary Leader. How did you come up with that title and what does that tell the reader? Well, the title basically is about daring to be courageous, to revolutionize your thinking in terms of your role as a leader, how you lead yourself, how you lead your people. And it's all about really finding your voice. And I think now more than ever, post-pandemic, that there's a huge need for leaders of the world to actually think and (laughs) to behave differently. And the reason I chose that title is um, I've spent, you know, over 24 years traveling the world, working in many institutions and many sectors. And I noticed the leadership models and practices that were in play. And I really felt that the old traditional models and they're fantastic, don't get me wrong, but I feel that we really need a new and fresh perspective on leadership and we need to really focus on the people element of it. We need to invest in people. And that is why I chose the title. And it's all about urging those who are in leadership roles, but also those who wish to move into a leadership role, to be courageous enough to revolutionize their thinking and to lead very differently. And would you agree with my thinking that being a leader It's not about power, it's not about control, it's about leading. And someone who maybe doesn't think of themselves as a natural leader may be the the very person that would make a good leader. Oh, completely, completely. And they're the people who are probably working for leaders who do think that leadership is the old way, is one of being, um, you know, maybe dictatorial or more instructive or it's all about power or the, the position or the title And my thinking and my belief, and this is what the book is about, is leadership is all about people. People are the solution. The byline is people are the solution. And I'm encouraging leaders to change their leadership style. And it's all about the the really the essence and the role and responsibility of a leader today. It's all about developing the people around you to be the very best that they can be. It's not about throwing your weight around. It's about really taking the people and the organization and indeed the customers the organization serve or the service users in actual fact is to do the very best by all of the people that you as a leader serve. And and I really want to emphasize the word. It's not about servant leadership per se. It's about the very best of putting your people first, listening to them, seeing them, hearing them, valuing them and developing them to be the very best they can be. So for those people who think they might never be a leader, I would like them to step forward and also be courageous and look at themselves and basically, you know, to live the life they want to live, not the life other people and certainly not the life other leaders want them to live. And that's a very good and informative answer there. Now, if I can make a small comparison, you mentioned there that, and we both agreed that being a leader, often it can take someone who previously would never have thought of going into that role. Now, if I can make a comparison with, um, for example, 
uh, performance arts, radio, television and so on. And people assume that people in that role are extroverts and they're very confident people. And from my own experience and people I've known, it's often the opposite is true. Um, because someone can often, when they're performing, they they come out as confident, they come out as very sure and extrovert. But when you meet that person off screen or off air, they're a very different person. And I think that's a, would you agree that's a fair comparison? I think there are certainly there are similarities, Rick, uh, because sometimes, you know, when you talk to people who are on the stage or who are in film or documentaries, they, they tend to um, assume a persona. And when they're in that persona or in that that kind of that mindset, then, yes, they do tend to be more confident. And then at a personal level, that's when they're different off air. So some people can be very confident professionally, but very lacking in confidence or maybe self-esteem at a personal level. And for, for those people, they tend to perform in the workplace because they know what is required of them. They, you know, they follow procedures, they follow guidelines and they, they tend to get into a comfort zone. But at a personal level, they're probably afraid to step into their own power because the, the truth is they probably don't realize the power that they actually have. They don't really know themselves, the essence of themselves. And as I, I take, you know, readers through the book, I go back to that. That's the starting position. It's about know who you are. Go back to your core values your motivators are the intrinsic or extrinsic, you know, who are the people who inspire you? And there are a lot of exercises there for people to actually do do a self-assessment. And I, I do believe, and, and I think when we talk about the comparison there, for those people who, who tend to have almost a Jekyll and Hyde persona in those situations is they, they are only one person and they need to represent themselves fully as that one person in their personal and their professional life. So they, they need to align and they need to then go back and do the inner work. And to be honest with you, if we don't do the inner work, the outer work will suffer. And this is how, how that comparison is, is, is quite good. This is, this is how they need to address that. So for the the, the shy and the retiring individuals who think, oh, I don't think I'm any good at that. They could also be responding to the paradigms that they may have, um, you know, heard and listened to and lived by um, from from a very early age. And, and they also need to be to be addressed and to be dealt with. So they do need to step into their own power and the book will help them to do that. Absolutely. Now, talking about the book and going more into the book, tell us the story behind how this book came to be, how you came up with the idea and how the idea became the book we're talking about today. Okay. You know, like everybody else, um, I had often heard, oh, there's a book in you. I, I often thought that myself, and I was one of those uh, shyer people, um, less extrovert for the want of a better word. Um, but what I would say is the book has come about from my work uh, over the 24 odd years in particular. I've worked in over 27 countries and I've worked with many, many institutions and individuals and financial institutions, particularly um, with people at, you know, senior staff level, junior management, middle management, senior management, and in more recent years, up to C-suite and board of directors. And I've worked with them, conducted workshops and training, and I continue to do mentoring. But what I noticed as I traveled worldwide uh, was that the leadership issues were, were similar. So regardless of the country or the culture or the tradition or the creed, the leadership issues were, were kind of almost prescriptive. And I felt, but the issues are the same everywhere. And the primary issue for me was that, you know, when developing strategies and everything, and I've done a huge amount of work in that area myself, the starting position is always the bottom line. So what is our growth going to be? By how many percent, you know, are we going to grow the bottom line? And what do we need to do it? And in more recent years as well, the focus is on, okay, 
digitalization, technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for me, the people, while they were part of the strategy, they were not front and center. And every good leader, they achieved their results through their people, not through the technology or anything else. So for me, the wrong the, the focus was in the wrong area. And that's what my book is about. It's about put your focus back on the people. They will bring you the results. They, they, they are in the, the strategy. They are in the decision making, but not strongly enough. And that is what gave me the, um, the idea. I, I always wanted to put my years of experience to, to, to very good use. And I also wanted to have a greater impact and bring a new perspective on leadership to, to many people worldwide. And I can't travel the world continuously. So the best way I felt to do that to get a broader reach is through the medium of a book. And then yep. training programs will follow from that. So really, that's the story of the book. That's how it came about. It is based on my experience of leaders worldwide in every culture um, and I really do believe uh, now more than ever post pandemic, we really need to put the focus back on people and everything else. You know, technology is an enabler. It's it's not the end game, not at all. If you were asked to describe this book to our listeners, to your readers in one or two short sentences, how would you describe it? I would describe my book as a very comprehensive go-to guidebook on how to lead and motivate your employees with integrity and authenticity. It, it outlines the steps to take to master your self-leadership first, to lead according to your true values and to consciously see, hear and truly value your employees. and. When you master your self-leadership, you will then be able to lead your people far more effectively and more consciously. When compared to other similar books, if I can use that term, what would you say makes this book, your book, stand out from the crowd? I, I believe the book is, it's about, for me, it's about soul-centered leadership. It's not about power and control. Um, it's all about people. It provides very practical inner work exercises. And there are some very effective templates and techniques and tools that can be applied immediately in the workplace. So it, it's very much a fresh perspective on soulful conscious leadership. And it invites and guides the readers to become more self-aware and to understand how their thoughts, attitudes and behaviors as leaders are actually impacting on and influencing their employees. So I, I really would call it a leadership cause and effect guidebook. And it's something that they will return to time and time again. It's not something that will sit on a shelf. It's something that you will thumb through and you will go to certain paragraphs or sections at any given time, you know, when different incidences arise in the work scenario. And is this part of an intended series of books or is it just a one-off? Well, it's the first one and uh, I, I do intend to write a few more in the leadership genre. Uh, so I would say it's the first of a series, definitely. And talking about other books, I believe that you've also co-written another book. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, I co-wrote a, um, a journal um, called Food for the Soul with a friend and colleague, Moira Riley. And basically, um, it's something we decided to, to launch during COVID. We felt people were really overwhelmed. They were quite lost in terms of who they were, um, where they think. And so we, we worked on uh, the journal to basically give them a guided journaling opportunity um, to, to really kind of find themselves again. And it's not unrelated in actual fact to, to dare to be a revolutionary leader. They could quite, quite well go hand in glove. But that, that's the other book I've written to date. You used the word dare as we did earlier in the interview. So let me, let me use that as a topic for my word to dare to write a book. 
that was totally different from anything you've written before. What would you- I like to write I would about, you know, spirituality and community and people and people being really at the core of our, our life and our existence and our purpose. Back to the old values, I most definitely believe that. And it's to, to move at a pace that they're not quite able to keep up. And I think we need to get off the technology pedal in some regards. Don't get me wrong. It's it's very valuable. However, there are an awful lot, and I see it in, in my private clients. And, you know, the technology has caused to lose the ability to actually focus, to actually concentrate on something that they would love, you know, to develop more in themselves. They, they're they looking at it and they're comparing themselves unnecessarily with artificial scenarios and people and and it has caused it has caused huge upset in the minds of an awful lot of people and I would like to I would actually you know to explain um, and it would be to help bring people back to their true self. Very wise words indeed. Now in closing, we've talked in detail about the book and about leadership and the qualities that make a good leader. But if there's, is there anything that we haven't talked about, anything we haven't covered that you feel is important for you readers and our listeners to know about this book? Yes, I, I think really I would like to, to just remind people that it takes insight and great courage to become a revolutionary leader and to become a leader who puts their employees at the heart of all their strategic thinking and decision making. It's it's easy to follow the crowd. It's it's courage, courageous and takes great courage to actually do right by your employees because it's the right thing to do. So what I would encourage that you're in a leadership position or wish to go into one, first do right by yourself and make revolutionary conscious decisions about how you think, act, and behave as a leader. And finally, tell me about the feedback that you've had so far from friends, family, people who've read the book. What have they said about the book? Well, actually, you know, I, I've been delighted uh, with uh, all the feedback that I've received. And uh, wh- what struck me most is that one of the one of the comments that has been been made most often um, is that people say, I wish this was around when I was, you know, younger in my work situation. And they also wish that their managers and leaders of the day had had access to a book like this. They, they just feel that their memories of their leaders are not all um, good. Um, and they feel that this is a fabulous uh, tool for actually digging deep and doing the inner work. They were surprised at how deep they had to go, but they were also surprised at how much the exercises and the templates, particularly in the first part of the book on self-leadership, actually helped them. And um, there are some other colleagues of mine uh, felt that it was very well researched. They they really loved the fact that I put the, the self up first, then the employees, then the results. And they thought it was quite courageous of me to put it out there in the first place. <laughs> so thankfully, um, it has been very positive. And an awful lot of people are using it as a go-to guide, which is uh, exactly what, what I hoped it would it would become for them. So I'm, uh, I'm delighted so far. That's wonderful feedback and, and much deserved. Thank you for that. Thank you, Rick. Dare to be a Revolutionary Leader is published by Balboa Press and is available direct from the publisher at balboapress.co.uk and all good book stockers. Well, it just remains for me to thank my guest today, the author and leader, Charlie Swords. Thank you for talking to me and we wish you every success with this book and the other books in the series. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Rick. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This is Rick Bell for Togonet Radio 2.0. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Indie Book Publishing. Join us again next week at noon Eastern. 